Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. On today's show, we are discussing life after university. Uh, the DFE published uh, an article recently uh, highlighting that those who are graduates, 87% uh, are in employment compared to in contrast with 70% of people who are under, who are not uh, who are not graduates and as a result uh, are employed and the significance in the gap between those who are employed and who are graduates and those who are employed and are not graduates is significant and uh, today we're discussing you know what does it mean what does life look like after university you know you've you've gone through the three years the five years to study you know beyond that what awaits uh university 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 life kita balalakse kita laksena kun challenges university as always we want you to get involved so if you've been to university and uh, you know you've had an amazing time or even if you didn't we want to know about your best memory from university okay what's the standout memory that you have the numbers on the screen as is the email address and if you email us, uh, we'll read it out live on air. And uh, if you call in, then obviously you can speak to us. We can have a conversation from that point. Um, I'm delighted that uh, staying with us uh, on our panel is uh, Masuma Sami, who recently graduated uh, and is in fact looking to carry on uh, studying medicine and do a second degree. Uh, I'm delighted that joining us is Mohammed uh, Ashwad Uddin, who is a uh, not a fresh graduate, who's uh, who, who graduated in construction management and is now working as a quantity surveyor. And we look forward to uh, finding out about your experiences post university. So thank you for coming on the show. And uh, lastly, we still have Mahfuz, okay, uh, Tuhin Ahmed, who is a fresh uh, medical graduate. So really and truly, I've, I've been told that it's Dr. Mahfuz by law. So uh, I will be calling that. We don't want any complaints coming in from your university. So thank you, uh, all three of you, for coming on the show. Um, so I'll start with you, Brother Ashwad. Um, you know, why, why did you study what you did? What was the reason behind you studying what you did? Was it your parents? Um, not really. Um, I was al always uh, into, like, I've drawings, like, Airplane buildings and breaking things, like things that. at home, and, yeah, yeah, kind of, and just <laughs> uh, kind of making things at home, make, trying to make new toys and stuff like that. I remember, yeah. remember trying to do that. Um, I knew that was kind of because I did construction ma construction management, so I knew that was the area I wanted to go yeah. into. But as you know, a kid or even b uh, b do my GCSEs, I didn't really. I, I knew that mm. was the field, but I didn't really know what prof uh, specific profession within that field sure. I wanted to go but into. But you knew even at school that you wanted to get into construction management, yeah. or, you know, within construction. Yeah, okay, and wow. fortunately enough, uh, my my brother, he done, my eldest brother, he done really well. Uh, he he also had the same interest. He got into cons uh, construction management. He done a construction management degree. Mm. Then later on, he uh, pursued a career in uh, Quintus Um he he c actually gave me career advice and yeah. I used to speak to him and that was very helpful. I found yeah. that more helpful than going to uh, a youth centre and getting careers advice. Sure. Sometimes I sure. felt like I didn't get the right uh, advice I was looking for or okay. I needed. Um, so my br eldest brother was really helpful. He, um, mm. he got me work experience when I was finding that very sure. difficult. Sure. Um, so I did w w two weeks as an engineer, two weeks as a quantity surveyor, and okay. I did uh, some other um, plumbing and electrical sure. jobs. Just to see what, where I fit in. Okay, thank and you. Yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, Masuma, just kind of touching on what Brother Ashwad has said, you know, do you, is it common for people within the same household, you know, siblings, to be, you know, to pursue a similar career um, or field? In my household, it wasn't. So my brother studied computer engineering at Queen Mary, and now he's um, got like a graduate job as a data analyst. Mm. Um, and me and my brother, we were on complete separate paths. He was all about like economics, finance, maths, and I really liked um, chemistry, biology, and like languages as well and mm. geography. Okay, and Mahfuz, you know, same question to you. Is you know within your family household, uh, are you? Uh, are you studying, you know, within the same field? Have you pursued similar, similar uh, f 
um, background in amongst, studying? Um, our siblings, yeah, I would pretty much say there's a huge emphasis in healthcare and going into a field within that so where do you think that kind of influence has come from is that something that you've all kind of have a similar interest where where, where could that have been developed i from? think again it stems back to our parents as in like my father he um my dad he always ha had this love for medicine and healthcare mm. and and it's not and i would say it's more for selfless causes as sure. in the way he sees it and um it's it's really has been passed on to us as well all of us mm. is that once you attain a certain skill set, you want to utilize that and help those around you. Sure. So, and the upbringing he had was he was amongst a lot of poverty, amongst a lot of people who didn't have access to healthcare. So sure. he always wanted um, um, that he even tried to go into medicine. Oh, okay. So, um, and again, he, he was, um, and my dada, he wanted my dad to do that. And so it's just been passed So what on. your dad couldn't get your dad to do, your dad managed to get you to do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're living your dad's dream. And my dad's. Okay. And Mahfuz, do you think, you know, um, you know I, I understand the reasons why your dad obviously pushed you, but, you, you know, who knows? Allah knows best, yeah? Um, by you not saying, considering other options, like, you know, Masuma's parents were quite kind of free in that, even, you know, by the Ashwads, you know, you might have, I don't know, for you might have been an amazing, I don't know, you might have, you could be in Bollywood right now in well, a film, you know, you might have had, you know, you might have had amazing talent. Why do you talents. say that? Why do you say that? Because okay. in secondary school times, um, I actually did drama. Okay. And I enjoyed it. We, um, we did a few plays in the West End and stuff like okay, that. I really wow. enjoyed it. And um, I actually did speak to my mom about acting, and she wasn't <laughs> too happy. But that saying, like, um, before I actually went, started, started, um, had the idea of studying medicine, I actually tried everything else out. So I went to a magistrate court and I did a mock trial, so I was part of that. Okay. For my work experience, I didn't really do the classic medical student thing to do. I actually went into business to Lehman Brothers before they were... Oh, so the banking yeah, sector. That was before they, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we, we, know, we now know why they yeah. had a meltdown, yeah? So okay. we did that, I did that, and I did the drama. Um, I even, like, I know it's wrong, but I did try some music as well early okay. on. Right. I was a keen um, piano player. And um, afterwards... Do you have anyone who can verify that? Um, that you speak were good. to my teacher who's okay. <laughs> resigned. Okay. Um, because people, uh, you know, when they come on TV, they can say a lot of things. I know, I know. But we need to make sure no, it's true. I did, true, I did uh, solid well. piano lessons in school. I, I remember uh, skipping the classes for, the, okay. classes for that. But anyway, okay. um, I also, um, what was it? What was I saying? Sorry. So, uh, Mahfoud, what I'm getting, uh, but that's what as well, and Masim, I'm getting, you know, you could have done so much more. You were a man of, you know, multi talent and you pursued I wouldn't say medicine. talents, I said I tried it. All right, try. So I, my, my really keen interest was in graphic designing. And so that was the battle I had with my dad, like f proper battles, as in during year 11, because I, I discovered uh, graphic designing in year 10, I think, through a course uh, my IT teacher used to teach. And um, I actually fell in love with designing and having an idea and putting it on a screen and mm. seeing the end product. And I just really liked that aspect of it. And um, again, towards the end of my, um, but my dad did say, go, if you go into graphic designing, it's not an easy road ahead. Yeah. It's a it's a huge struggle because of the competition. Of course. As in, and so um, just carried on with my graphic design. Sure. To be honest, as a side thing, and if it wasn't other than graphic designing, and the other, other option I was considering is teaching because I really like the aspect of helping the youth. Sure. So again, I continue. I'm continuing to do that through mm. youth centers and stuff like that, and workshops. So okay. everything I wanted to do, I'm doing. So. Mashallah. Now, thank I'm you for sharing that with us, Mahfouz. Uh, much appreciated. Um, Masuma, coming back to you. Uh, I think let's not get away from you know the elephant in the room, the debt. We're talking about the brilliant skills, the kind of experience we're getting from university. But you know, if people are now, especially with the new system, you know, nine thousand pounds a year, so you're looking at you know close to thirty thousand pounds in debt after you finish your course. How do you get your head around that? You know, what's your what's your view on that? My view is worry about that later, because obviously I can't physically see the money being transferred from my bank account, whatever, student finance, to the university. So I don't, I don't feel like I'm in debt. I think um, when all the students I've previously graduated... Is that why you're doing a second degree? Just to <laughs> delay paying back that debt? Um, yeah, like generally <laughs> I don't right. have any concern about sure. my previous debt. I'm mm. just concerned more about paying for medicine now. Sure. 
Um, I would say generally like there were a lot of concerns in my extended family about their children, my cousins going on to university because they're like £9,000 a year, yeah. that's a lot of money but generally if you're passionate about something that should not stop you, there shouldn't be obviously like a price on education. Sure, sure, so okay. I would say think about the money later because if you go university, as you said, you earn much nine thousand pounds more, no, like thousand, every year. Yeah. Okay, so. thank you for that, Masuma. As always, you know, we want to hear about your views. So, if you've gone to university and there's a standout memory that you absolutely cherish, you know, we would love to hear from you. So, please get in touch and tell us about that memory, uh, whether it's via email or through the phone. Um, Brother Ashad, would I be right in thinking, um, were you in debt after, you know, uh, mashallah, you know, I'm not saying that you're old, but uh, you seem like a very senior person. So did you, how much, how much, if you don't mind sharing with us, how much did you accumulate in terms of student loan debt? Oh, um, it would have been the 3,000 a year, right? Yeah. So, um, so 9,000 at the end? I did an extra year, so I ended okay. up doing four years. Four years, so 12,000. Um, so twelve thousand, yeah. And say, say for example, if you would, if you, if it was nine thousand back then, would yep. that have changed your kind of decision as to whether to pursue it or not? It w I think, yeah, nine thousand is a huge amount. It would make me think twice because um, it's it's a huge amount. Any and anyone not understanding finance properly, it would actually take them back and think, oh, I don't want to get into, you mm -hmm. know, I'll be like thirty grand debt by the time I come out. And I probably might just get 25k uh, salary. Yeah. How the hell am I going to pay that? Yeah. So then I understand. In terms of, uh, um, I'm paying my student loans off at the moment. I see it going out my paycheck, and it's it's not anything that will hurt your bank account. To be honest, it's it's just but it goes up, doesn't it? The percentage you pay back depending on how much you earn. Does. So the more you earn, the more you pay back. It does. It does. And if you if you look at if you look at it annually or for. Uh, the period you've been in your professional career and you, you've been paying off the um, student loans, it, it is quite a bit because they charge you interest on it. Um, when I was younger, I didn't see it as interest. I saw it as uh, I was explained as it was um, just that the interest rate is to cover the inflation rate, but it's interest is interest. Mm. If you look at, um, see, if, if you're looking at a non-religious perspective, it's fine. You can pay that off. It, yeah. it, it wouldn't really hurt you. Mm. But looking at it from a religious point of view, I would say take apprenticeship route. And there's some mm. really good apprenticeship mm. routes out mm. there. At the moment, what I'm doing is um, from in the next two months, I'm going to be I'm looking to pay off. 500 pound every month uh, to just get rid sure. of to get rid of it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Mahfuz, you know, what would you say uh, since uh, Badashwad's uh, touched upon it? What would you say to people who have a religious background and you know they're kind of in two minds? Because on the one hand, you know, if say people from the Muslim community, if they don't go to university, then in terms of skilled people, mm. people who are specialists, experts in particular fields, we won't develop that generation of. Uh, specialists yeah you know but on the other hand you know they're they kind of one you know they're they're, they're, str they're struggling between the two what's what's your take on that I mean firstly I personally believe religion should have stopped you from being educated mm. to the to as much as possible it's mm. like if you want to do medicine your religion shouldn't really be stopping you from doing it because once you attain the skills as a doctor you can benefit the ummah far greater um, but in terms of um, the funding issue, yeah, I agree. I mean, initially I wasn't really thinking about the funding issue and I was just thinking it's something everyone does, so I just have to do it. I mean, there has been recent more fatwas in place where yeah. certain scholars have come out and said that in this day and age, student loans are feasible and it's allowed for you to do so. Again, speak to your scholar about that. Yeah. But without touching on that, um, there are, I know a certain few people in studying medicine right now who are actually paying their actual degree off while studying at the same time. So that's one way of going about it. Okay. And I know a brother, um, Ismail, I don't know, um, I forgot the okay. organisation he started. Can I come back to you, Mahfouz? Yeah. I've got a caller on the line. OK, thank you. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, Brother Shuel from Camden, who is called in. Salaamu Alaikum, Brother Shuel. OK, I think, uh, yeah, if you could, uh, inshallah, call back, Brother Shuel, so we can listen to your views. So, uh, no, that's really inter interesting to hear, Mahfoud. I think it is that and mm. uh, that kind of challenge, you know, you're trying to balance there are, both. There are halal alternatives now as well where people are interest-free loans where you can take 
uh, money out and pay you back later. And these are new groups coming mm. forward. And it, inshallah, it shouldn't really stop you now. Mm. No, yeah, yeah Masuma Karim. Yeah, Ismail mm. Jailani, like he does, um, he's created an organization where you can crowdfund your own um, degree, like so to pay like the 9K every year, you would just set up an account, ask to borrow from your family members, even just a little bit, so it adds up and later on you can pay interest free. Mm. Okay, that's really good, uh, good advice. Thank you. Um, yeah, Masuma, what do you say to young people who uh, who don't want to go to university uh, due to the lack of employment opportunities out there? Because obviously there's, you know, parents or whatever reason why you end up doing a degree. And then if at the end there is no light in terms of work, then why would someone put themselves through that? What do you say to a young person who uses that as an excuse not to go to university? So I would say, like, university isn't... I think it's a bit overrated in terms of getting a job because if you compare people who get an apprenticeship and have had a job for three years as opposed to someone who's just come out fresh out of university with a lack of experience, like those doing apprenticeships at banks, like a lot of banks actually do it, but it's just, it's not, there's no awareness about that. Everyone, or parents just think just university, university, but there's so many alternatives that you could already be earning like good cash working in a good company. So I would say not to, you know, be scared, like follow the crowd and just go university for the sake of it. Just you realize at the end, like you're going to be in the real world on your own. So sure. you need to forge that for yourself. Sure. Well, Ashwad, um, my question to you would be someone who's worked, you know, uh, worked post uh, graduating. Looking back now, do you think you would have been in a better position had you taken time out and worked? and then going into doing a degree. Because sometimes what tends to happen is people do a degree because it's a natural thing to do. But they might not necessarily be in the right f um, state of mind or, or have the right skills or kind of the, the, the passion, the kind of skill set needed to do well. Whereas someone who kind of graduates, who, who goes into work, realises the challenges that are there and the benefit that a degree would have on them, uh, they, you know, they tend to then go back and do better. So someone who's, uh, who's in that position, you know, how, what's your take on that? Um, I say if if someone is unsure on what to study or what they want to do as a career, don't go straight into uni. Take take one year gap or a couple of months gap if if that is the case. Um, work within that time, but at the same time, ponder as well what you enjoy, what you would do good in, or if you face a challenge in a job uh, that you will still enjoy and you wouldn't just say. Sure. This, is, this is not me. I'm going to leave. I'm mm. going to do something else. You, you don't. You don't want to change careers every year or two. People don't do that. Mm. Um, so that that will be my advice mm. um, for people that know exactly what they want to do. For example, myself. I've always been a person that I I kind of knew exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, so I, I, I was sure. When I done uh, entered into university, when I enrolled to university and the course that I was doing, I was 100% sure, sure that you knew what this you is the one for me. Sure. And you. I knew exactly um, once I graduate, um, what jobs I'll be applying for, okay. um, okay. how I would go about that. And that is obviously because I had some support and advice from my uh, brother, like brother. You spoke about. Um, you. Also, for example, like doctors um, or people that get into medicine, they they kind of know from GCSE, they're like, I want to be a doctor. So mm. they, they work really hard and they get A's and A's and mm. B's and, you know, they do mm. really well. And then you see that throughout their college and then they go to university. They know 100% what they want to do. Um, yeah, just going back, if someone thank is unsure, I'll say take a couple of months, take a year. Think about it before they obviously commit to that. Okay, That's thank it. you. Uh, Masuma, before we go to the next break, um, and... Uh, but I want to ask, you know, try and inspire some people watching this at home. You know, do you, you've had your graduation ceremony, you've graduated. Yeah. Okay, tell us a bit about your experiences. Was it what you expected? How, how, what feelings uh, went through your head when you were kind of experiencing that? How was your graduation ceremony? I think my graduation ceremony was a bit emotional just to see everybody on my course in the room and then all my loved ones outside and like my other friends from different courses who had come. It just you know, like three years, it led to this day kind of thing. And 
it, it was really worth it. Like I would say the 27K was worth it because I wouldn't have gotten that experience anywhere okay. else. Um, I've met some lifelong friends. I, you, you know, you're not working for the student loans company, are you? <laughs> no? no. Okay. Um, I had, um, yeah, I've had amazing experiences, got involved with like societies sure. and, you know, just being a part of my department. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that, Masima. Uh, that's the end of the second segment. Do stay with us for the third segment when we will talk about, you know, if you're in a situation where you're not sure what to do, uh, our panel uh, members will share their light on what can be done and how to make sure you choose the best possible qualification for yourself. So do stay with us and uh, until the break finishes. Thank you.